does sin give a legal jurisdiction to the devil? Is there an open door because of our sin? Let's talk about it. Thank you for landing on my channel for the best teachings on divine health and divine healing hit that subscribe button click that old bell so you'll be notified when I post new content every single week every single Wednesday hi my name is Tony Myers I was healed from Lou Gehrig's disease my testimony was featured on the 700 Club I've written five books about divine healing and I've guided thousands to be able to recognize and acknowledge their full healing. And with just a few tweaks in your perception and your beliefs, you, yes, you, can be next. This belief is one of the most dangerous beliefs because now we're saying it is up to us to go off of our righteousness and that if you sin you're no longer gods therefore the devil has jurisdiction over you the things of this world have jurisdiction over you that is not what Jesus showed us, nor is that what we see with the letters of Paul. So we're going to deal with this. Does sin give the enemy an open door? Are you sick because of some unconfessed sin? My early answer straight up is no. If that were the case, no one would ever be healed. Yet, Jesus healed never once did they have to repent of their sin before Jesus healed them. Crowds of Thousands were all healed without having to repent for individual sin. Now, this is not a message to go out and sin. Rather, this is to clear up the wrong thinking that sin gives access to the devil and he can put sickness on you and he can choose that you're not healed which that just is not the case at all do you not know that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit as a reminder, once again, though, if you believe that sin opens up a door to allow you to be sick, then guess what? Then we get what we believe. Which is why many people are sick. Because they believe this. And they believe they cannot be healed until they get rid of all unconfessed sin. 
This is what we're talking about today. Now, those who are listening to me, I am assuming you are seeking Jesus. You are seeking God. And the more you know the love of Christ, the more love that you will put out and the less sin will have a hold of you. Because now we are Christ. We are no longer our own. We are His. I personally believe repentance is important. Repentance meaning it's nothing more than recognizing the wrong and turning away from it. You don't have to blubber and everything else and sling snot all over the place and show God, you know, so many times in scriptures. Jesus forgave the person of their sin without them asking. The, the paraplegic man that was lowered down from the roof. Jesus said, which is easier? To say, I forgive you of your sins or get up and walk. And he did both. The man did not ask to be forgiven. The adulterous woman, same thing, did not ask to be forgiven. Did not even ask Jesus to get involved. The crowds of 5,000 plus and all were healed. The people in the streets, when John and James, excuse me, when Peter and James passed by, and they were healed. We have to be careful to not take one verse out and apply it uniformly to everyone. Because a demonstration of Jesus shows us that Unrepent sin does not block a healing, nor does it give us give an inroad to the devil to put sickness on us. And that's easily shown in the Gospels, and we're going to talk about it more. Part of the problem is we don't realize where the righteousness of God is in spite of our imperfections we are still so much sin conscious and trying to do it through our own self-effort and that's what hurts us instead the more we realize we are truly righteous because of jesus then the more we will live that out and we won't put ourselves under the law of sin and death anymore which is exactly what happens when we're working through self-effort instead of realizing we already have the righteousness of Christ within us let's take a look at this because I want you to have no doubts we're going to start off with John 9, 1. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man who had been blind from birth. Rabbi, his disciples asked him, why was this man born blind? Was it because of his own sins or his parents' sins? It was not because of his sins or his parents' sins Jesus answered. Now that's end of story. Jesus is no respecter of persons. He is the same today, yesterday, and forever. Therefore, once again, that applies to everyone. 
Now the specific reason Jesus gives, this happened so the power of God could be seen in him. This was one of the messianic miracles that proved Jesus was the Son of God. So many people read into it without knowing about the four messianic miracles. Yet, once again, I will point you right back, and I do teachings on this. It wasn't even that God had stricken him with blindness, as people make an assumption of because of Jesus' answer. That is incorrect. Now, let's go and look at Matthew 6.33. So above all, constantly chase after the realm of God's kingdom and his righteousness that proceeds from him, then all these less important things be given to you abundantly. Now, I want to switch to Proverbs. The lovers of God who chase after righteousness will find all their dreams come true. An abundant life drenched with favor and a fountain that overflows with satisfaction. So righteousness leads to an abundant life drenched with favor and a fountain that overflows with satisfaction. And then we go back to Matthew 6.33. So above all, constantly chase after the realm of God's kingdom and the righteousness that proceeds from him then all these less important things will be given to you abundantly. What does that mean? Divine health for one. It is in his righteousness that we have healing and an abundant life unearned by us. The answer is already yes. It is the Father's will that all be healed. Why? Because now we are His righteousness. And His righteousness is the foundation for life abundantly now. We separate an abundant life into after we die. In the Proverb 21, 21, there's a specific tie-in to health and abundant life now. They did not have at this time a, a spiritual going to heaven. All of their blessings were for the now. So this is a direct tie-in to what we have now in Christ because of his righteousness. We have healing independent of our actions. Let's look at Romans 1.17. This gospel unveils a continual revelation of God's righteousness a perfect righteousness given to us when we believe. And it moves us from receiving life through faith to the power of living by faith. This is what the scripture means when it says, we are right with God through life giving faith. 
So his righteousness is the very foundation for our healing on earth with no strings attached. We are now his, therefore the world has got nothing on us. Romans 3, 21 through 22. But now, independently of the law, the righteousness of God is tangible and brought to light through Jesus, the Anointed One. This is the righteousness that the scriptures prophesied would come. It is God's righteousness made visible through the faithfulness of Jesus Christ. And now all who believe in him receive that gift, for there is really no difference between us. Now there is no difference between Christ and us, because he's within us. Therefore, if Jesus could not get sick, and he could not, therefore can we. If the devil had no inroad to Jesus, does he have an inroad to us? No. And this is one thing we must start to understand. So many people, when it comes to healing, are looking for their past sin. They're looking for who they haven't forgiven. And they come up with theologies as to why they're not healed. When the scriptural truth is much greater. Romans 3.24 Yet through his powerful declaration of acquittal, you've been acquitted of everything. God freely gives away his righteousness. His gift of love and favor now cascades over us all because Jesus, the Anointed One, has liberated us from the guilt, punishment, and power of sin. If you are the righteousness of God, then the sin has no power. Therefore, sin cannot block a healing. This is truth. I would have never been healed. I had unforgiveness. I had active sin in my life. Yet I was healed. Since the Lord is no respecter of persons, that stands true. Why? Because we are not our own righteousness. We are given God's gift of righteousness, which is the foundation for all his favor. Therefore, evil no longer has an inroad to us. Let's look at Hebrews. Hebrews 10.1 For the law, having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers thereunto perfect. For then would they not have ceased to be offered, because that the worshippers once purged should have had no more conscious of sins. Now, in Christ, we are purged once and forevermore. 
Should we have conscious of sins? No. But we are trying through self-effort. Therefore, sin smacks us in the face. When we, when we truly realize that we are the righteousness of God, not based on our actions, and I will say this again and keep saying it, then our actions will be more righteous because we're no longer under the obligation which frees us to the law of life and liberty. Therefore, we will live more sanctified lives because it's no longer contingent upon our actions. And when we understand that, we start living it out. Now, a lot of times we use Mark 25 through 26 and whenever you stand praying, if you find that you carry something in your heart against another person, release him and forgive him so that your Father in heaven will also release you and forgive you of your faults. But if you will not release forgiveness, don't expect your Father in heaven to release you from your misdeeds. Now, people will wrongly say, you have unforgiveness, that's why you're sick. But yet, when working off of our actions, off of self-effort, then yes. But when we're working through Christ Jesus, Christ in us, then no. And as shown, Jesus never turned away one person from healing because you did not forgive so-and-so. That did not happen. And it is unfathomable when before the Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost that out of 5,000 people no one had unforgiveness. So we have to look not to our own understanding because our own understanding will take this verse out and say, oh, see, we can't be healed if we have unforgiveness, so therefore I've got to figure out who I haven't forgiven. One, if, if you have to think about who you haven't forgiven, then you've probably forgiven them. And then in the search, now you're bringing up the emotions and the feelings, and so then you conjure up unforgiveness. So hear what I'm saying. I am not encouraging anyone to walk in unforgiveness. We have no reason to walk in unforgiveness towards anyone, especially when we understand what we've been forgiven of. Jesus gave out forgiveness lavishly. Therefore, we should too. So do not mistake my words. We should not walk in unforgiveness. But because of Christ, will it be held against us? Is it a blockage to healing? No. As I stated these verses in Romans, We have received the gift of righteousness. 
Now there is no difference between us and Christ. He was the firstborn of many. Now we are sons of God because of Christ, because of who is in us. So by all means, hold no unforgiveness towards anyone. But does it give the devil an inroad to us? Does he have legal rights to us? Absolutely not. Yet through his powerful declaration of acquittal, we've been acquitted. Which means we have the one, the only judge of us, who has judged us to be his righteousness. All because Jesus, the anointed one, has liberated us from the guilt, punishment, and power of sin. So therefore, can sin stop or block a healing or does it give access to sickness only when we believe that only when we put ourselves under the law of sin and death then yes it does and that's what many of us do because we don't really have the understanding of what we truly have in Christ so be blessed be healed and be a blessing. In the description section, you will find links to my books, links to my Amazon author page, a link to my website, and a link to become a channel member to where you receive special perks is very inexpensive. $3.99 or $4.99. So check out those links. Check out the website. Be blessed. Be healed. Be a blessing. Next week we will continue with these teachings on what hinders healing.